Hi, my name is Kemo. This podcast is brought to you by Majuma TVET College and it specifically relates to financial accounting and five for South African TVET colleges. In this presentation, I'm going to tackle incomplete records. And for that purpose, I've selected question four of June 2016 question paper. I'm hoping that students will achieve the following subject outcome at the end of the presentation. Students will be able to transform an incomplete record to a system of a double entry. And I'm hoping that students will attain the following learning objectives. Calculate, students will be able to calculate capital amount using the balance sheet. As I've already mentioned, I'm going to look at uh, question four of June 2016. I'd like to take you to question four of June 2016. There you go, that's how it looks like, uh, 4.1. I specifically want to focus on requirement 4.1.1 for the purpose of this presentation. Let's quickly go through the given information. The owner of Cox Traders informs you that no proper accounting records were maintained for the two financial years and the 28 February 2014 and 2015. He can, however, provide the following financial data. Let's see what we require to do before we even consider the given financial data. The owner requested you to draw up financial statements. The owner requested you to uh, draw up a financial statement to calculate his net profit for the year ended 28 February 2015. Remember, in order to calculate the net profit, we would have to complete um, the income statement. But remember, we were specifically told that uh, no proper records were maintained. However, we, uh, therefore, we're not able to complete the income statement. Even if you look at the given financial data, we don't have sufficient financial data specifically relating to, to the computation of the net profit. However, all those transactions actually relate to the balance sheet. Therefore, what we can do is we can draft the balance sheet and use the capital amount to determine the amount of the net profit. Okay, let's go do the balance sheet and then determine the capital and then I'll show you how exactly we're going to calculate uh, the net profit once we've determined um, the capital amount. Even though they didn't specify what type of financial statement we need to draw, we just need to apply our professional judgment to determine that we could have that information could have only permitted us to do the, the, the balance sheet. Okay, without wasting your time, I'd like you take, to take you to the Excel spreadsheet. That's the Excel spreadsheet that I'm going to employ to draft the balance sheet. I just want to reduce it. That's how it looks like, but I don't think you'll be able to see anything. So I'm going to take it to 36. I hope it's not confusing. There you go. I've already pre-populated pre uh, descriptions relating to... Uh, items that we need to take into account in the preparation of the balance sheet. However, it's important that you as a student are able to identify from the given financial data items that resides in the balance sheet. Okay, let's go to the given financial data and draft the balance sheet. The first item, so I'm going to do <coughs> 2015 I'm not going to do financials relating to 2014. I'm only going to do uh, the balance sheet relating to 2015. And I'm going to I'm going to treat uh, each line item uh, as I deal with it. The first item relates to loan. I'm going to take loan. I'm going to copy loan. I'm going to copy loan and I'm going to take it to, to, to my balance sheet. Remember that loan would be classified as equity and liabilities, but it would specifically be classified as a liability. And the liabilities, we make a clear distinction between non-current liabilities and current liabilities. We not provided sufficient information. Let's assume that this loan is an interest-bearing liability and therefore a non-current liability. So I'm going to write it there in that column. That column is specifically reserved for notes. 
I'm going to write it in that column. Let's go establish appropriate sale. There you go. The amount is 8,000. There you go. The amount was actually 8,000. I'm not sure what happened there. 8,000. There you go. Moving along swiftly, the next item related to bank. And it was favorable, therefore it's an asset. Remember that uh, bank, it's a current asset. And it's classified under cash and cash equivalent. I'm going to write it there. There you go. Copy and paste exercise. The next item is equipment. I'm going to write equipment. Remember, equipment is classified as uh, a non-current asset and it falls under property, plant, and equipment. Remember that amount relates to the cost. I'm going to write it there. The next item relates to accumulated depreciation. We do not have a description in the balance sheet specifically uh, relating to accumulated depreciation However, we take accumulated depreciation into account in determining our carrying value of our asset. Therefore, I'm going to minus it there. There you go. So that's our accumulated depreciation. It forms part of our property, plant, and equipment. The next item is prepaid expense. Remember, a prepaid expense is a current asset. It is specifically classified under trade and other receivables. So I'm going to take it there. I'm going to paste it there. The next item is accrued expense. Accrued expense is what we call expense payable. It's something that the business owes. Therefore, we're going to classify it as trade and other creditors. Under your current liabilities, there you go. The next item is investment. Investment, it's a financial asset. It's classified as a non-current asset under your other financial assets. There you go. The next item relates to debtors. Debtors is classified as your current asset classified under trade and other receivables remember i already have something so i'm going to say equals to i'm going to add okay apologies i need to put the equal sign there and i need to put the addition there you go okay apologies i need to fix that quickly Okay, I'm just going to say enter. Okay, yes. There you go. The amount is correct. Uh, creditors, creditors, as it says, it will be classified as a current liability. I'm going to take it to um, liabilities, current liabilities, trade, and other creditors. We already have an amount, so I'm going to say equals to. I'm going to add that amount there you go moving along swiftly we're almost there trading stock trading stock is classified as current asset let's quickly go find current asset and it's classified as inventory there you go the last item relates to cash flow cash flow is classified as cash and cash equivalent under your current assets cash and cash we already have an amount therefore i'm going to say equals to i'm going to add that amount okay there you go that's it we're done remember an important concept or principle when we're preparing the balance sheet the total assets must be equal to your, I want a different color, must be equal to your total lib equity and liabilities. At the moment, they are not equal. Uh, the value of your total assets is greater than your equity and liabilities. 
Remember in this case, we didn't expect them to be equal because the business maintain a single entry um, which relates to incomplete records. Therefore, the only way we can determine the value of capital is by taking that value. So I'm going to say equals to that value and deducting our equities and liabilities. So I'm going to say minus 16,806 which relates to our equities and liabilities. So essentially what I'm saying in this case, we were going to determine our uh, capital as a balancing figure because the business didn't maintain um, accurate records. They only did uh, a single entry system. So they didn't maintain accurate records. So this is referred to as incomplete records. So essentially that's how we come to the calculation of our capital. I just wanted to do a balance sheet in the next presentation. I'm going to do the calculation of net profit by using the note to the capital. Uh, thank you. If there are any questions, okay, the two are equal. Let me just quickly go there. The two are equal. I just want to grin it because now the two are equal. I'm going to take it to... 14. I'm not sure if you're able to see the entire thing. That's how it looks like. There you go. That's how uh, essentially the balance sheet looks like. I'm not sure. Maybe I should take it to... Eighteen. Okay, let's see what happens. Yes, that's how the balance sheet looks like. If there are any questions, please post them on my cell phone via WhatsApp or you can post them via the email address. Thank you.